Hey guys, what's going on? So I'm going to make this video to show you guys how to install an operating system on your potato. What's a potato, you're thinking? Uh, it's not the delicious food that we chop up real small and fry up. It is actually a computer board made by Libre Computer. And it's a little uh, SMB or, you know, s you know, system on a chip, whatever you want to call it. It's a, a Pi variant. Um, and it has a lot of interesting little features on there. It does have HDMI, AV, has a micro for uh, your power, have an IR receiver, as well as an SD card, your 40 pin, as well as four USB 2s and a 100 megabit Ethernet card. It does not have Wi Fi, it does not have the uh, slots for a ribbon cable for connecting monitor or, uh, or sorry, a screen or a uh, camera to it. But it does have two gigs of DDR3. It has a uh, uh, A53 uh, processor on there, quad core, 1.5 gigahertz. And um, yeah, so it also does come with one neat thing that Pies do not. Uh, and that is, if it'll focus for you, right there, an EMMC slot on the bottom. We could install an EMMC on here and have uh, faster onboard storage. But uh, for the sake of this video, we're just going to go ahead and use an SD card, boot this thing off the SD, get it up and running. We are going to install the Raspberry Pi image that they have for this and uh, get this thing up and running. It'll be similar to a Raspberry Pi, anything you would do Raspberry Pi related. Uh, a large portion of that will work on here, like I said, with the exception of the ribbon cables for the monitor and for a camera. But uh, let's go ahead and get into that, guys. Give me just a second here and we will... Uh, get back to this thing. All right, so you go to the Libre.computer website. On the website here, you'll see that under products, they have several different products available. One of them is Le Potato, or the Potato. So we're gonna go ahead and click here. This is where we wanna start. This is where we're gonna go and find out some more information about it, including specs. So we'll hit the spec sheet here real quick for you. Do a quick little scroll down, and, and I'll have a link for this in the website, or on the description for you to the website. So you guys can check it out. But again, it's got the uh, ARM Cortex A53, 1.5 gigahertz. It does have two gigs of DDR3, the four USB 2s, 100 megabit ethernet. Um, it is HDMI 2. And uh, yeah, that's all the goodies that are here. But what we're gonna be looking for right now is the downloads page. And under downloads, there's a bunch of different OS's available here for you to go ahead and download and try out. Like I said, we're going to do Raspbian, so we'll click on that there. It takes us over to their little hub page where we can click on the distro here. If we click on distro server, we can go ahead and download the right one. Again, remember, you are downloading the one for the uh, uh, potato, which is the 905. So you'll click on that and download it. I've already done so, so I'm not going to do that part, uh, but I have already done that. So we want to go ahead and do that, as well as we want to go ahead and download and install the Raspberry Pi Imager from the website. I'll have a link, again, down in the description to get to this as well. And you'll download that. One other thing, if you don't have it, is you might want to install PuTTY. Because uh, after we get this thing up and running, we're going to uh, see if we can remote into it. Because depending on what you do, uh, you may want to have this set up to run to be uh, a remote access device. So having PuTTY uh, installed to have SSH enabled uh, is always a good thing. So we'll we'll touch on that too in this video and make sure we got that working. And this is all just kind of leading up to uh, another video that I'll put out later about getting uh, Clipper installed on here for the 3D printing community. Most of what I do is 3D printing related. So um, yeah, that's just kind of where we're going with this, guys. So keep following along here while I do this stuff. We go through the setup and get everything going. Give me just a second and I'll be right back. All right, guys. Now that we got the Raspberry Pi Imager up and running here, we want to click on Choose OS, scroll down to the bottom to use Custom. In this case, we need to go find the little folder on my computer where I'm hiding that. Uh, currently, I believe it's in my OS folder, Libre computer. And again, I have several of these devices, so I do have several images downloaded, but the one you're going to want to get is going to be the uh, S905X. Make sure that's the one you have because that is the potato. So that's the image we want to grab. So we'll open that. We'll choose 
the uh, flash storage, make sure you are picking the right SD card or the right device when you're doing this because I would really hate for you to override uh, some important information. So make sure you're selecting the right, uh, right card there. In this case, I know that's the one I'm using. Uh, this stuff here will not work uh, for this image, so you can go ahead and skip doing any of this right now. We can come back to that and make sure that's all set up in the uh, uh, or on the Pi after we get done with this. So we'll do that and we'll hit write. We'll tell it yes because we know that's the device we want to write to. And this part is going to take a while, guys. It's going to take you know 10 plus minutes for this part to write and then verify. So. Don't be alarmed. Get yourself a cup of coffee, glass of tea, or some pop, or whatever your favorite beverage is. Sit back and relax, and uh, when this is all done, we'll come back and uh, continue on. All right, guys, once that part's done, we're going to go ahead and click Continue, and then we want to go ahead and eject the SD card and put that in the potato. So let's go ahead and uh, jump over to the potato. We'll get everything set up and uh, get everything plugged in so we can get it turned on and and take a look and make sure everything is working like it should be. So let's hop over there. All right, guys, here's the potato. We're going to go ahead and flip this over and stick the SD card in. I do want to connect a few other things to it real quick so we can play around and control it. So let's get a dongle in here for a keyboard and mouse. Let's hook up our network cable so that we can have access to the internet as well as let's get the HDMI cable here plugged in so we can show you guys what's going on and we can see what we're doing. And let's get our power cable over here plugged in. I am using a, um, sorry about that. I am using a, um, um, <laughs> can a kit power supply. There we go. So we got all that stuff hooked up, plugged in and everything. We're ready to go. Let's jump over to the capture card, power this thing up and see what we get. So, let me go ahead and hit the old power switch here. Let me just jump back for a second, show you those pretty lights on there. Look at those pretty lights lighting up. Now let's go back over here, and there we go. We saw the little Libre computer logo, and then we see the uh, getting ready to boot up here into the uh, OS. It does the little Debian Linux thing, and it's going to run through a few things. We'll see the cute little penguins there. It'll flip through some screens. Lots of text flying by real quick. And uh, hopefully in the end, we'll boot into the Raspberry Pi desktop or the Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, was it Raspbian OS desktop? So hopefully we're getting ready to boot into that. And there we go. Getting a cool little background. Got everything there. Now it's asking us to kind of go through the setup process. So we'll go ahead and click next. Uh, in this case, I am in the US. So we'll pick United States, American English, time zone. For me, I pick Chicago or Central. It doesn't really matter. It's the same. I'm going to tell it to use English and use the English keyboard because that's what I have. We'll click next. Doing its little setting location, please wait. This can take a moment, so you know, grab yourself a drink while you're waiting. All right, now it's time to go ahead and enter in a username and a password. I'm just going to go ahead and click here and put Dan. And to be generic, we'll do Raspberry. Raspberry. Don't forget your P if you're using Raspberry. It's Raspberry. Click Next. Default username and password. We strongly recommend that you choose something else. Click OK. Reduce the size uh, for this monitor. I'm not going to worry about that right now. We'll click Next. Operating system and applications will now be checked. Updated if necessary. Um, at this point, I'm going to tell you to go ahead and do this. This part can take a little while to do all the updates, but I'm going to tell you to go ahead and do this part. So click Next. Sit back. Relax. And uh, we will come back once this is all done. Might take a little bit, so might be a little wait for me. Might be a uh, it'll be a second for you guys. All right, guys, the updates are done and it's rebooting, so we'll let it kind of go through its thing here. We'll see what it does, and fingers crossed, it will uh, be up and running here momentarily. Correction: screen went to sleep. Shake the mouse, it wakes up. Still doing the install though, so it's been probably about ten minutes for me. It's still going through the process. Just hang in there, guys. Don't be alarmed. Don't be alerted. And uh, 
the screen falls asleep, shake the mouse, wake it back up, make sure it gets done. So as soon as this is done, though, I'll come back and we'll we'll pick up. All right, guys. So that is done now. The system is up to date. We click OK, and it wants to do a restart. So now we do the restart, and once it's done rebooting, uh, we'll be back into the OS. This part shouldn't hopefully take too long. So. Uh, Fingers crossed here, we'll be back up and in the system in just a moment. There's the nice Libre logo that they have. And then, of course, we want to log in. It should auto-log in, which it just did. Otherwise, you can always hit enter if you're impatient and don't like to wait. But uh, now it's going to go ahead and flash all that wonderful text again real quick. And then we should be back in and actually into the Raspberry Pi desktop. Or the Raspbian desktop, as they call it. Sorry for that, guys. Need to get a little drink. The throat's a little scratchy. But uh, there we go. We're in the Raspbian uh, desktop here. Once we get in here, one thing I want to check is we're going to go in. And I believe it is under preferences, maybe. Yep, under preferences. We have the Raspberry Pi configuration. So we're going to click on that. We can get to this other ways. It's not like we have to do it this way, but let's see here. Um, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, there we go. Raspberry Pi configuration. It loads up this way here. We click on interfaces and we want to make sure that uh, we have SSH turned on because that's going to be the way we're going to remote into it. So make sure SSH is turned on. Everything else in here for right now, I'm going to leave off. We're going to hit OK. Give this a minute. It is telling me that we do need to reboot. So we'll reboot again. And while it's rebooting, let's go ahead and jump over to the screen so we can play around with putty and make sure that that's going to work. So let's jump over there real quick. All right, guys. In order to get putty, you'll want to go to putty.org. If you're using a Windows computer, if you're using Linux or uh, Mac, you can just get right in from that. I believe in Windows, you can use SSH through uh, PowerShell, but I just like using uh, putty. So we're going to go ahead and use PuTTY here. All you'll do is click on download, and then there's some options here for the Windows installer. Uh, select the one that you choose. For me, I just went with the regular PuTTY. <laughs> Let's actually load PuTTY here so we can actually get into it. So bring that up here. Scoot this on over here. Make this easier for you guys in the video to see as we're doing around things and playing around. Let's go ahead and change that. Hit... Uh, sessions now let's connect to it check and see what your ip address is mine's 163 and there we go we have putty loading up we'll hit yes and then here for the login again is pi and raspberry is the default password and uh oh must have typed it wrong let's take a look here I was telling me access is denied. It won't allow root or pi. So give me one second here. Let's go ahead and close this out. Click yes. Let's try that again. And let's see if we can log in with Dan. So let's come back over here. Let's go to appearance. Change. Let's make that font size larger for you guys to see a little easier. Do the 192.168.1.163 for this device. Let's type Dan and Raspberry. There we go. Since we created a user account called Dan in this case, it was Dan to log in, not Pi. They do have uh, the, the default login set to me. So there we go. But we are in now. So this is kind of where you know we wanted to be. This is what we wanted to see because for the... Uh, Next part of the video, or the next video that's going to come out after this one, is going to be installing Clipper on the the uh, potato and getting that up and ready to go. So, um, again, the operating system is now installed on the potato. We are using the uh, Raspbian OS image for that. Let's jump back here. There we go. Hi guys, my hair is a mess, I apologize. But uh, we do have the Raspberry Pi or Raspbian OS installed on the Potato now. So the Potato is up, booting, running. We are able to connect to it. It does have an operating system. So that's good. That was the whole uh, 
idea of this video. There's going to be another video that will probably come out a week after this one where we'll go through the process of getting uh, Clipper installed on here and making sure that that's up and running. And then after we get Clipper installed, there'll be another follow-up to this one probably later. Uh, once I have a printer that I can connect it to, we'll have a, a video going through the process of getting Clipper actually connected to the potato and uh, showing it in action. So um, keep watching for those two videos. The Clipper, uh, Clipper install video should follow a week after this video comes out. So when you see this video, uh, a week later there should be the video about installing Clipper on the potato. I'm not sure when the printer install video will happen. Uh, I do have a couple other ideas in mind for some other stuff as well while I'm working on a printer. So uh, again, uh, my usual routine, guys. Stay out of trouble, stay out of jail, and happy 3D printing. Bye, guys.